So unless you've been living under a rock, you have heard, seen, or been told about this brand new game where Pokemon have guns. This game is Power World, a game that has seemingly come out of nowhere, being released a week ago to climb all the way to second on the all-time Steam charts, being games like Elden Ring, Cyberpunk, Dota 2, and even Counter-Strike 2 somehow, reaching a peak on Steam of over 2 million concurrent players. That is a number no one would ever have expected, not to mention it was released on the same day on Xbox Game Pass, where I played, so who knows what kinds of total numbers there are for this game. With countless streamers playing the game and becoming the most streamed game on Twitch for a time, probably achieving the same kind of dominance on YouTube and Kick as well. But one thing is for certain, Power World for now is here to stay. Now there were trailers back in 2021 and later, showing off this game, but let's be honest with ourselves now, before January 19th, did any of you watching actually know that this was coming out or guess it would be this popular? Uh, no, you didn't. But it was released both on Steam and on Xbox Game Pass as a game preview, similar to what the game Grounded did, and that was quite successful, with many people I know loving the game. But this means that the game isn't the full release game, and that constant updates and features will be added before the official launch, in quotes, official launch. It's basically a full game now, so don't expect massive wild changes and updates to come and change the game's foundations. But I don't think many players care as it's a well-made game as it is right now. It is made by a developer called Pocket Pair who have made other games like Craftopia, which just by watching the trailer basically shows the basis for the game Power World with the same survival and building mechanics that would be in Power World, along with a whole bunch of other assets taken from the game which is neither good or bad, it just is. And upon starting the game you are greeted by the character creator. It's something special and not extremely customizable, but serves a purpose to make different characters and to make them tailored for you. And then, when the game begins, you will begin to notice some obvious instances of heavy inspiration in a lot of the game's design. Now tell me that isn't a Sheikah Slate from Breath of the Wild, or... Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I thought to myself that the sounds are a blatant rip-off of Breath of the Wild, not to mention the temperature gauge and the climbing with the stamina bar as well. There are also many others like this, like the fonts when entering a new location, more sounds, the text at the fast travel points, and the towers as well, all seem very high rule to me. But it doesn't even stop there, as the game's biggest similarity is actually to the Ark survival games rather than the Pokemon games. The best way to think about it is Power World is a mix of Ark survival with some Breath of the Wild sprinkled in, but instead of dinosaurs in habits in the world is filled with Poundland Pokemon. Now, not to sound like a hater because I do truly like this game for what it is, but these similarities seem like a bit of an asset flip. But the early game is really easy, getting to learn the mechanics of the world, the basics of crafting, and of course, capturing of pals within Pal Spheres. Really? Pal Spheres? What a stupid name. But you'll need to weaken the pals in order to have better odds of catching them, so you do actually get to beat the fucking shit out of these creatures so you can capture them. Peter is not happy. It's surprisingly satisfying to do, and now you have all the basics down with crafting, building, and catching pals, so 99% of what you actually do in the game is learn right there and then. The first few things you'll build to get your base up and running are the basic workbench to build items and the pal box to store pals inside, as you can only carry five on you at any time. And then you get to actually upgrade your base, usually by progressing in the game naturally, leveling up, and building technologies to enhance your base to allow for a more seamless survival experience. And to build them, you'll need to gather resources like wood and stone, most most of the time to build, finding them commonly on the ground or mining rock deposits and chopping down trees. Even being able to craft a pickaxe and an axe to make this job easier later on through the playthrough and then even getting pals to do it for you. The game also makes great use of typical survival mechanics found in similar games like this. Things like keeping on top of your hunger meter along with how hot or cold you are depending on the environment you're in, needing to craft different outfits for those occasions or use lit torches to provide some warmth. Stamina is a bit stingy though when climbing or especially gliding but once you get pals to do a lot of the traveling and resource gathering you barely notice it but it's not just you that needs to survive as you have to look after all your pals in camp by keeping them fed by using plantations tended by you and your pals along with their happiness or they'll all transform into a depresso and you don't want that and as your base gets bigger and better you'll get to build bigger and bigger houses making things neater and trying to tidy up the mess you've made of the starting area like everyone. The environments in Power World are at some points breathtaking and unbelievable, as having explored for hours on end and having hardly any of the map unlocked. It just shows how vast the world is. Now, for most of it, it is quite empty and there are a lot of water sections, but it is beautiful in some places and I sometimes just love to stand on top of a mountain and look at the world around, seeing distant towers to travel to 
or different biomes to explore. It's actually so fun just to ride around and explore the world, finding new pals to fight or capture, or just opening new routes by finding the fast travel stations, and always having that massive tree in the distance, wondering what it is. Eh, it's for another time when I have a full month to play the game. But from what I've opened up so far, it is a lot more beautiful and massive than I ever would have thought. But let's now get into the elephant in the room. Oh well, the mama rest in the open. The thing the game is most known for is its selection of over 100 pals, the Pokemon ripoff in the game. Now, they may look and sound like Pokemon from an official game, but... They actually have many more uses in Power World than in any official Pokemon game. Each of them has a unique-ish design to them and do fit into the world created, wandering the open land, but after beating them half to death, making sure not to kill them, you can capture them and make them your slave to work at your base, as each pal will have a set of skills that they can do around your base. For example, helping with buildings is the main one, but fire types able to cook food for you or smell ingots in a furnace, grass and water types together can grow crops, allowing for a seamless and endless way to provide food for you and your pals, and some could even collect resources like wood and stone, meaning you can have your pals do most of the heavy lifting for you while you're off exploring the world, trying to find a new pal to enslave. But you you would better keep them fed and happy, otherwise they'll start to slack off and take breaks. Slow the production down and that will not do. You may also need the assistance of all of your pals to come and help defend your base from a group of enemy raiders. These can range from suicide bomber birds and other pals to enemy people trying to ruin your day. They're pretty simple to manage and even catch some of the enemies attacking you for your own use later on. And especially as you get more and more pals to help you on your base, you can just leave it to them and it'll be a cakewalk. But what the game is actually known for is, let's be honest, Pokemon with guns. Now, it isn't as simple as that. It's not all of the Pokemon or pals can wield firearms but for those select few that can it is a neat thing but this is part of a larger mechanic in the game as early on you'll be able to craft specific items for each of your pals which enhance them in some way and some more useful than others for example my Anthroday slash Xerneas ripoff can have a saddle crafted for it so I can ride the open world map atop my deer and one of the most fun things I did in this game so far is riding my deer and shooting a crossbow at the innocent little pals. Like, whoever said fox hunting was bad? This is so fun. Man, I want to do it in real life. But within this collection, there are saddles for other pals, so you could fly or ride a different pal. You could make one a flamethrower. And of course, some of the pals have the ability to use weapons from handguns, automatic rifles, rocket launchers, and even a minigun for Grizzball. It is something that has made the game infamous and has partly been responsible for all the buzz and success surrounding it. But keep in mind that this is a late game part as you'll need to do a lot of grinding to actually level up and actually unlock these weapon abilities to craft. But no survival game like this would be complete without enemies to fight and Power World certainly has a great amount to play with. There are of course all of the pals in the world that you can take on but there are some super powerful boss pals to fight, maybe when you've leveled up a bit, human enemies to fight, dungeons containing a powerful pal and the towers where each one contains a boss pal and their trainer which are super hard for the unprepared and are a bit like a final boss for the area of some sort. Being them will give you another fast travel location and ancient technology points for even cooler items to build. But there has been a massive uproar or something about the similarities between a lot of the pals in Power World and actual Pokemon designs. I look at his Twitter thread by user Cecilia Fay and you really start to notice some design similarities. Now they definitely aren't copied one for one but to say that a lot of these weren't heavily inspired would be an understatement, especially when ones like this Mega Eevee and the Cobalion one here. It's quite striking to see all of these here, and you can have your own opinion on this, but it doesn't bother me as even though they are certainly inspired by actual Pokemon, it seems more like a fan-made version rather than actually trying to steal the designs. And with all this success, so many people are absolutely loving having their own little slave trade going on, with some reviews on Steam really telling you what the game is like. Beat them up, enslave them, starve them, force them to breathe, and then eat them when they get out of line definitely sums up the entire game in 21 words. Or, my depresso got depressed. Well, let's be honest, it's kind of in the name. And so on, with so many people loving their own little slave empire in Power World. I mean, look at the image on the store page of the game. Like, you can make your own assembly line making AK-47s, forcing your pals to work. It is great. 
And let me reiterate, at the time of recording this, Power World has hit 8 million on Steam in less than a week, and probably some more millions on Game Pass as well. It has been a massive success, and hopefully a huge wake-up call for Nintendo and Game Freak to improve the next Pokemon game. Now, I don't want to fly my Charizard and burn everything down like Daenerys in Game of Thrones, but hopefully they can take some of the aspects that work in Power World and apply them to a more family-friendly Pokemon world. And I also don't see this touching Pokemon anywhere close in the long run. That franchise has had over 25 years global dominance and success and even though power world is an overnight sensation it will not compete with pokemon in the long run but hey they have laid out a roadmap with pvp raid bosses and more of everything we love about the game i hope they do improve and continue the development of this concept as it has taken over the world at the beginning of 2024 so give it a go if you already haven't it is a great game and is perfect for those who love pokemon with guns bye bye